Hidden in plain sight across Britain, the network of lost branch lines which served so many towns and villages is all about us. They all have their history woven into the landscape. They all have their stories to tell. And here is no exception. There are explosions. Aerial attacks. Delightful countryside. and an astonishing variety of buildings still to be found. Alongside architecture otherwise lost. So, let us explore this line together, and in so doing, examine the surprising life of the Saffron Walden Railway. Located in the County of Essex, the railway came to Saffron Walden in 1865 via the West Anglian Main Line at Audley End. An extension followed a year later, connecting the line to a junction at Bartlow and the now lost Stour Valley Line between Cambridge and Haverhill. Closing to all traffic under a century later in 1964, the line is notable for the variety of station architecture that is still in situ to this day. Situated in the village of Wendon Zambo, 41 miles and 55 chains north of London Liverpool Street, Audley End Station opened in 1845 as Wendon's, before a change in name three years later, reflecting its proximity to the nearby stately home. In fact, in 2012, Audley End's running in boards were suffixed with For Saffron Walden to denote the significance of the town's presence. And, whilst there were occasional through trains between Saffron Walden and London Liverpool Street, Passengers would, in the main, be obliged to alight at Audley End for their connecting train and cross the station forecourt where, dazzled by the low winter sun, we might just glimpse what once was. Adjacent to the main station building, the waiting room for the branch line still stands and has served various purposes in the years since the line's closure. But seen here in 1963, a rail bus has drawn to a halt and empties itself of passengers. Today, the view is familiar, even if the scene has changed. Looking towards London Liverpool Street, we see now how road has replaced rail in the form of a car park. And the same view here in 1970, five years after closure. and here several decades before. Let us begin our journey along the branch. The line struck northeast through what is now the extensive station car park and crossed the B1383 via Fighting Cox Bridge, so named after the nearby public house, which still stands. Audley End Station appears at the centre of the picture as the line proceeded towards the camera, crossing the River Cam just below us. The railway then entered a deep cutting, where there was once a substantial three-arch occupation bridge. The bridge was demolished and the cutting filled in not long after closure, but this plantation marks the presence of both and the route of our onward journey. I hope you are enjoying this film so far. Please do like, subscribe, share and leave a comment. Should this line have closed? Should it reopen? Let me know your thoughts below. Trains continued on a substantial embankment across Fulton Slade, the position of which is roughly marked out by these lengths of rail. It was around here that the Irish navvies who built the line would hold their outdoor mass during construction. It was also hereabouts that a locomotive was strafed by machine gun fire from a German aircraft during the war years. The firemen, locomotive and coaches were all struck but all survived.
Continuing along the embankment, trains entered another cutting, marked beneath us by the tree line, and bringing us in to Saffron Walden. And one mile and 67 chains by rail from Audley End, we reached the station itself. Opened in 1865, Saffron Walden was a terminus until the opening of the line to Bartlow a year later. Happily, the main building survives, living its life as a private residence. Easily the line's most substantial station, there was only ever one platform on the downside. As seen in the previous photograph, there was a 32 lever signal box which controlled access to the runaround loop and many sidings, a portion of which can be seen in this photograph taken from Debden Road Bridge. You may be able to see part of the station building just beyond the goods shed to the left of the picture. All gone now, all gone. but the Railway Arms public house endures, just opposite the station building. Bidding farewell to this once fine station, we proceed onwards towards Bartlow. But not without examining the bricked up South Road Bridge to the east of the station. And the view of the station site in the present. And in the past. Here's South Road Bridge to the right of the picture, and the station beyond in the distance. In front of us, yet more by way of facilities for goods and locomotives alike. Housing now sits where trains once simmered. Some 200 metres later, the embankment on Victoria Avenue is quite overgrown. but the abutments which supported the railway bridge across Thaxted Road can still be found. And, on Radwinter Road, the same. The railway continued out of the town as marked by the fencing. Here, on Simpkins Close, a spur of line diverted away from the railway to serve what was once the Air Ministry oil sidings, which saw much traffic during the Second World War. Beyond, the railway continued to climb out of the town and here crossed Ashton Road Bridge, delivering trains into the next station. One mile and three chains from Saffron Walden, Acro Holt was the final station to be constructed on the line in 1957 by Acro Engineering Limited, who operated on the adjacent site and whose workers the station was intended to serve. The striking architectural style of the building is startlingly at odds with the stations both before and after it, in keeping with the brutalist trend of the time and anticipating the functional aesthetic of newly built stations today. From approximately the same position, the platform shelter can be espied among the verdant tree and undergrowth. Here's another photograph of the station. Notice how the railings were made of the scaffolding materials for which Acro were renowned. Several decades hence, and the scene is altogether different. A set of sidings served the Acro engineering works, joining the railway via a trailing connection, but what little remains of this is entangled in undergrowth and lost in time. After a mile, we stand on the track bed in a cutting. Where nearby we find what was known as Painter's Bridge, under which trains passed. Now demolished, services would cross Nutsbridge at this point. 
and pass into woodland before emerging half a mile later at the next station. Some two miles since Acro Halt, we arrive at Ashton Halt. Opened in 1911, the architectural variety of the stations on this line continues abounds. Contrast the clean lines and modern engineering of Acro Halt with the earth, clinker and timber platforms of Ashton Halt and its Great Eastern Railway carriage come waiting room. But what a delight to find that well over a century later, Ashton Halt endures. Upon departure, trains would cross the railway's only level crossing on Fallowden Lane. Before long, trains would cross this culvert, now hidden away beneath the undergrowth, and then proceed over the long since demolished Ricketts Bridge. A mile hence and the outline of a structure lies before us. It is in fact the railway's final bridge beneath which trains passed. It then proceeded through this field and cut by the left hand side of this plantation. And before long we arrive at our final station Bartlow. Forming a junction with the Stour Valley line between Cambridge, Haverhill and Sudbury, it was here, after seven and a half miles, that the Saffron Walden Railway reached its end. Two platforms served the Stour Valley line, and the main station building was certainly grand looking. It survives today as a private residence. However, the platform for services to Saffron Walden and Audley End was offset from the main station building, on the curve of the branch line, and was considerably more low key. Like Ashton Holt, the platform was of clinker earth and timber construction, and a wooden hut provided shelter on inclement days. And yet, as one can see, the variety of station architecture continues unabated, even if this is only for reasons of economy. With the platform on the left, and the overgrown track bed on the right, we face back towards Saffron Walden. The scene then, and the scene now, was a quiet one. But this was not always the case. For in 1968, four years after the line's closure, the environs of Bartlow's Saffron Walden branch platform doubled up as the Malaysian jungle for the film The Virgin Soldiers. Released in 1969, the climax of this comedy war film sees a troop of inexperienced British soldiers defending their positions after a guerrilla attack derails their train. For this purpose, Stania Black 5, number 44781, was dressed to resemble a Malayan Railways locomotive alongside a rake of carriages. We stand on the platform and, turning away from Saffron Walden, we look towards the junction with the Stour Valley line, which is much clearer in this photograph, with the platform shelter in the foreground and Bartlow Junction signal box in the background. Here a view of the same building looking back towards Bartlow. 
From a similar position, the scene is quite different. Here, the signal box in 2018. And in the present day, where two of the four walls have now collapsed. And here, the branch to Saffron Walden to the right of the picture. In its 99 years as an operational railway, there were more quiet days than busy ones, more ordinary days than extraordinary. And this is hardly a surprise. Its seven and a quarter mile length was largely rural in character. And with the exception of Saffron Walden, the communities it served were too sparsely populated to financially sustain the line. Steam hall trains gave way to diesel rail buses as technology advanced and the need for economy became evident. And as buses and motor cars were seen to offer cheaper, more convenient alternative means of transport, the death knell for so many branch lines across Britain, this one among them, was sounded. Yet whilst the fate of such branch lines is sadly familiar, the legacy of the Saffron Walden Railway may not be unique, but it is surely pleasantly surprising. From its dressing as the Malayan jungle, to the striking variety of station architecture that existed both then and now. So should you live near a lost railway, take a closer look, see what structures remain, read up on the stories it has to tell, and listen to the memories of those who remember it. And you too may find the life of your local lost railway is just as surprising. I hope you enjoyed this film. Please do like, share, subscribe and comment. If you feel you would like to further support the work of this channel, why not buy me a coffee? See the link in the description. And join me next time for more Rediscovering Lost Railways.